Welcome back, everyone. I'm on a little bit of a time uh, limit today, so I'll try to be a bit quicker than I usually am. Uh, this is my fifth round game of the Smith F Invitational. Um, the basic uh, format of it was that it was a 6,000 point uh, battle line hold the center game. Um, so in this case, I used my A list and I used my B and my C. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, they wouldn't fit on my fancy little uh, setup that I normally have. So without being a bit too small and annoying, so I'm just reading it off the document. Um, basically, it's going to be the same list from the previous two games, uh, but I'm adding a Minotaur Warlord, who's super fast, basically. Three Razor Tusks, three Chariots, and a Beast Giant. Um, I am up against another Beast Herd's Army, which is the first uh, Beast Herd mirror match I've ever played. Um, and... Uh, the only time, the only the second time that I've ever actually played against Beast Herds. So, um, uh, no, third time. Third time ever. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it feels to be on the other side of the fence. I've just adjusted my microphone there because it looks like it was going off the rails with how um, loud it sounded like I was being. Um, so hopefully that's a little bit better. Uh, to be honest, I didn't look at my opponent Kevin's list until... Uh, like I, I looked at it in the, the the start of the event when I like reviewed all the lists, um, but I didn't look at it until I came. Um, I didn't prepare all that much uh, for this one because uh, this is more sort of like a fun, chilled out tournament than serious or anything. Um, basically, he's brought uh, two blocks of infantry, so some wild horns and some long horns, and then he's also got uh, two of the same type that ambush. He's got a couple of units of racer tusks, a couple of units of centaurs with throwing weapons. Uh, two units of chaff dogs, uh, two units of chaff gargles, I think. Yeah, across the both of them. Uh, he's got a briar beast. He has got a race tusk chariot, um, and he's got double Gortak. Uh, his characters, he's got a shaman, ma shamanism master, a beast chief BSB, and he's got a, a beast lord who's his general. Um, really the things that stood out to me in the list were the fact that his BSB has only got a two up armor save, so pretty vulnerable uh, for a list that really needs leadership. Um, and that gore attacks are going to be really hard to deal with because I don't have anything that wants to fight them. Yeah, I reckon there's nothing in my list. Uh, uh, with magic, maybe like a unit of chariots, maybe even a unit of razor tusks into them could kill it. Um, but they would, they would be hard to deal with was what I was thinking. Um, so this is after deployment. My, I got to pick the side, um, and the map was basically the same. Oh, the, the forest in the middle, I must have taken a picture as he generated his forest. Um, but that goes sort of just over to the left around about where the dogs are now. Um, so my point, my opponent dropped everything for first and I tried to counter deploy. Uh, basically I just looking at what he had on the right hand side away from all his leadership, I was like, I reckon I can make a bunch of things run to Terra over there. Um, but in retrospect, I think it would have been better focusing some of them over towards the middle because they want to fight those infantry blocks. Um, and realistically, they don't want to fight the Gortak or get charged by the chariots. So I don't think it was a great plan for me to be over there uh, without good enough chaff uh, to block up the chariots and hope, like, try and rely on a terror check or something. Um, so I probably, in retrospect, would have maybe put both units of my chariots over there. Um, and then maybe two wide razor tusks, and that probably would have been a change that I would make and then played the chariots wider, the, um, razor tusks a little bit wider. These guys less central, so about sort of here region, and then have a couple of monsters in here. Uh, particularly, it would have been handy to have a single model around here because this is the stuff that is more vulnerable to ambushes generally. So having something that can turn around and deal with the ambushes would have been nice. Um, let's just see how it goes. Oh, yes, that's just where he placed his forest in the end. Uh, this is after his turn one. Basically, he's pushed up kind of aggressively in the middle. Not completely going all out, but um, he's, you know, he's not shying away from a fight. 
But over on the right, he was worried about being combo charged, I think. Because um, while the Giant probably doesn't beat the Gortak one-on-one, two Giants... Fuck, I don't even know if that works. Because two Giants, if they charge him, strike first. And then I've only got ten attack, so probably going to do about three and a half wounds. So two Giants, honestly, also probably lose. Um, but I actually, seeing that, wasn't that unhappy with that because I was happy for a bit of a standoff and to redeploy my monsters because this was about the time when I realized I wanted my monsters in the middle um so I was sort of like oh if I can keep you back with a bit of a threat and move some of my points over into the center to threaten things it'll be better for me anyway um my turn I don't know what this is nothing's really different uh okay this is after my movement um and Basically, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, so basically, I charge chaff against chaff. Um, I didn't really have a great way to deal with these dogs, so I just charged my razor tusks into them. And I took a risk that's probably pretty dumb. Um, I charged my BSB into his razor tusk herd, thinking um, that if I get whispers or if I get uh, the hereditary off, I'm a decent chance of breaking them. Um, I think I generally, with my Centaur Chieftain, overestimate how hard he is to kill, because generally with my Beast Herds, I'm playing Druidism, um, I'm playing often like a 5 wood Beast Lord on a Chariot, or a Minotaur Warlord, so having only 3 wounds, and having lower defences than I often go with, um, and not having Druidism to give me wounds back, sort of makes me often underestimate how much he can actually take on, um... So that was probably a bad idea, but I did it. Uh, da, 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 da. And basically the results here were that uh, my pigs killed his dogs and they overran to be out of the Gore-Tax line of sight, which I didn't actually think about and was quite lucky in the end, to be honest, but we just got out of his line of sight um, and sort of annoying up the middle uh, with these two guys. I also brought my Briar Beast on on turn one because I thought that'd actually be pretty good at either killing Chaff if it stayed there Um or just getting into the rear of things, causing fear and like, not so much the Longhorns, but the Wildhorns are going to have trouble dislodging a Briar Beast from their rear um, without turning around and having their characters fight them. Uh, and then yeah, my pig over here killed the dogs and Rover ran like 10 to chaff his uh, pigs. Uh, yeah, that's the final position. My BSB did four wounds. Um, I did have the Hereditary and uh, Gnarled Hide Totem up on him. So the pigs were taking leadership seven fear check and break test. Um, they failed the fear, but that didn't actually help me as much as it could have because distracting doesn't stack with other minus ones to hit. So it was still just fives to hit. Um, and cause he made the break test, it didn't really matter in the end. Uh, I took two wounds, he took four, I won, he stuck. And the next round I will be dead, which is basically what happened there. So. Uh, this is after my opponent's turn two. He's killed my BSB. Uh, he killed my pigs. They put like a couple of wounds into the wild horns and two wounds onto the BSB. Uh, and he's brought... His Gortak failed a frenzy check. Because it was out of uh, BSB range, I'm pretty sure. Uh, charged the pigs. They fled from terror, but I don't think they were going to hold, to be honest, anyway. So, um, they... I would have fled regardless. Um, then he came up and basically just chaffed stuff. Uh, but I am sort of happy just trying to occupy that Gortak. And if I put a few wounds onto him, that's good. Because then the other things might be able to kill him. Um, other than that, he charged my chaff and killed it over here. And he brought his gargoyles up here. To chaff my big block from getting into the flank of his uh, wild horns. Okay. This was a turn one I played a lot of charges. So, um, pigs fled off the board, which is, you know, leadership six, pretty standard. Uh, my chariot, because of the position of the pigs, couldn't actually get everyone into the Briar Beast, or like two models in, so I've got one model fight in the Briar Beast. Um, I managed to get both of my Jabberwocks into the pigs. I think they were needing like a seven or an eight, so it was actually like fairly reasonable, but it was nice to get them both in. Uh, I sent my giant into his... Gargoyles. I was hoping to tear them off, but I wasn't thinking it was likely. Um, and I was happy to just clear them off anyway. Uh, I did. There was a totem beast that went through in the last turn, 
which came up there and I was realizing how annoying it was when my dogs failed their march test because I wanted them to chaff here and then my gargoyles to sort of block the random mover here so that my wild horns could push up but when that when they failed their march tests, I just realized I still need to chaff these guys. Um, and uh, I can't have a, bro- a a beast get into the back of my unit because he'd probably win. And um, if he did, I'd be taking a break test that wasn't re-rollable in Leadership 8. So like, I just didn't want to risk that, basically. So I just turned around to face him, which wasn't all that great. Uh, but I did charge my Evoc General out into the flank of the wild horns and my minotaur warlord in basically with the idea there being that my uh evoc wizard could be taking the challenge um that's basically oh my briar beast got into the uh, rear of the longhorns uh and again that idea was like one i'm a pretty decent chance to hold them up uh i'm a pretty decent chance to kill his bsb and mean they don't get a reroll to their fear check um and because it's uh, fear cores that are into his general's unit. It means he's only passing on leadership eight to the pigs, which means that with fear and the minus one aura from the Jabberwocks, uh, the pigs are on leadership six. Um, the other one tried to get into deny attacks. Basically, I was just, I needed an 11, I think, to get in, and he didn't make it. Um, but he was just wanting to get in, so the pigs had to attack him, and they couldn't focus on the, uh, the Jabberwocks. Uh, after that, basically, he didn't kill my Briar Beast in the Longhorns, so I held him there. Uh, despite having the uh, Whispers of the Veil up and the Briar Beast in the rear of the Longhorns, uh, he managed to pass his break check on uh, his Wild Horns. Uh, there's two wounds sitting on the unit, that's actually... I, I killed his BSB with my Minotaur Warlord. Um, my uh, my Jabberwox did a lot more damage than they should have. But they, uh, so they killed three pigs, but then he held on leadership six, um, which is like, I mean, it's not, you know, it's, it's not really safe, but like, it's, it's pretty reasonable to make a leadership t- uh, six test. Um, yeah, that was basically it. Um, I'm just sort of trying to hold up the Gortak on the left here or sort of, uh, waste its time for long enough that I have enough time to deal with these two infantry blocks in the middle um, and then probably get rounded to deal with objective or do something else. Uh, Okay, this is my opponent's turn three. Basically, my chariots fled from his gore attack on the left, but they only ran like six or something, so they got caught and gave that gore attack a beautiful position there in the flank of my Minotaur Warlord. Um, We killed the pigs and that was great. Uh, And then... Oh, we didn't kill them. We broke them, I should say, because they're still there at the bottom. Um, we, we were just playing a little bit of cat and mouse over on the right, but after I started to redeploy, he moved his Gortak pretty aggress- uh, aggressively over here. Um, and I didn't break this block yet, but he did kill my Briar Beast. So I'm basically sort of sitting here going, now I'm locked in and this Gortak is going to fight my Minotaur Warlord. Really, all I can hope for is that I break him this turn. Uh... And I'd probably make them... If I, 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 I was planning on making them run from my wizard so that my Minotaur Warlord could get the charge and do his impact hits and be like, once I've got my impact hits, use Wild Form for strength 7. Um, I'm pretty likely to kill a Gortak. And I'm sort of running out of time. So I'm going to speed this one up a bit. Uh, I'm going to show you what happened here because basically this is the most important thing. So Jabberwock charged his Longhorns. He doesn't have a BSB anymore. He failed his Leadership 9 and ran through. This Jabberwock charged a few things, and basically everything in this region fled. Um, the Wildhorns stayed in combat this turn. Uh, I think we've got it. Yeah. They stayed in combat. So as you can see, everything's fleeing. The Gargoyles actually charged the Longhorns and ended up catching them and killing them. Um, things are fleeing. I'm blocking the line of sight of his Gortak with my Giant. Um, and basically just going, well, that's all good, but I'm about to lose my Minotaur Warlord and my Wizard, probably, and I'm about to lose this giant. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this Gortak. Um, there's also ambushes up here that I've just chaffed, basically, because um, if he charges his Gortak in, the angle that they're at, the overrun won't take him into my Minotaur Warlord because it will hit the Gortak first. Um, 
Yep, so I don't clear out his wild horns yet. They're down to seven, uh, six models in the unit and still his wizard who's only taken one wound. My wizard has taken two. Um, my Minotaur Warlord does have Break the Spirit on him, but it's not actually bothering him. He's, he's still hit in every round of combat more times than the amount of attacks he has. Um, I popped rerolls to wound on him, basically, because if he's fighting the Gortak and he's fighting him first... Um, being strength 7, 5 attacks, if I can just get a bit lucky with my hits, I might be able to, with the reroll to wound, actually take the Gortak off, basically. Um, in my opponent's turn, he did charge the Gortak in, he did charge the other Gortak in, and he came around here with some of his other stuff. He charged my chariots with his uh, Longhorns, um, and yeah, like rallied his uh, Centaurs, but the other ones are already gone. And then, unfortunately, I think this is about to get bad. Yep. So, this Gortak, who charged the flank of my giant, did four wounds to my giant, and my giant with... Oh, uh, maybe five wounds. I think he did five wounds to my giant, and my giant with ten attacks back, auto-hitting and wounding on fives, did six wounds, uh, which is just stupid. So, at this point, we've got a lucky overrun that got my uh, Razor Tusk out of the line of sight of the Gortak that I didn't see. A lucky Gortak dead here from flank charging a giant, which should never happen. Uh, his Longhorn block running to a terror check, uh, which was quite lucky. I, given that I had a flank with the uh, Jabberwock and a front with the giant, with uh, probably only in contact with two models, it might have gone well for me anyway, but as it was, it was a pretty uh, unlucky sequence for my opponent, basically. Um... And then, what was more unlucky here, is that my chariot's actually stuck against his Longhorns. Uh, and his Gortak that charged in died to my Minotaur Warlord um, before it got to strike. So, my Minotaur Warlord didn't take any wounds from the impact hits. Um, and I think got seven hits and did six wounds to him, so he didn't get to strike. So, that was just sort of like, I uh, ended up breaking that unit, running them down. Um... Yeah, cause it, it wasn't that they weren't steadfast, it was that they didn't pass their steadfast check at that point, so I ran them down. Um, and my wizard, my general, still lived. So basically at this point, it's all wrapped up. Like, I've got the objective, he scored it once in the first turn, and then I've got it from here on, on my turn three... His, no, his turn four, so my turn four is next, so I've basically got it locked up. Um, I can send my single models up to deal with these guys. And nothing is really all that threatening because this giant can just kill those chariots, uh, particularly with how it happened in the end. Because I think I did seven wounds from nine attacks. Um, yeah, so he's only taken five wounds actually. So he did um, six wounds to a Gore attack out of nine attacks. Um, I did, I think, seven wounds on three up, and then he failed like all of his um, armor saves. So it was a bit stupid over there, too. Uh, and that's basically, I don't think I've got any more pictures. Yeah, this is basically how the game finished, where I just, I just mopped everything up. When there was a couple of models and maybe a turn left, um, Kev was sort of like, look, let's stop wasting time. Um, you've got everything here. Um, so it was a 20 nil to me. Um, but it was it was another one of those games, a little bit like my last one, where it just... It didn't really feel like I played particularly well. It didn't feel like I outplayed my opponent. It didn't feel like he made mistakes that I took advantage of. It was just sort of a bunch of dice happening to go my way. Um which I think is kind of the point of this kind of beast herds list, where you're taking the Jabbers and you're taking Evoc and you're taking the Hereditary. You're just sort of making your opponent take a lot of leadership tests, and if they fail some, leadership tests are so punishing, you probably win the game. Um, which is basically what happened here. I think I, I think charging my wizard out uh, into the flank of his Wildhorn unit was pretty like pretty smooth move. Um, because it was always going to be hard to kill him, and then I'm going to take it, make him take a bunch of tests, where because it was going to be easy to kill his BSB with my Minotaur Warlord, um, where it's not going to be rollable. So I did actually, I did like my plan in the middle, and I thought it went well, and I thought it was, um, even though I had sort of the leadership debuffs going as part of the plan, I don't mind that because I'm like getting into combat um, and breaking him that way but I don't like the terror checks everywhere. And particularly, even if that had all gone my way in the middle, 
Um, which I think I had a pretty good chance for it to go anyway, with just like uh, Minotaur Warlord and Wizard fighting his block, them taking three or four break tests or something. Um, and then if I got the Jabber and the Giant into his Longhorns and then pump some magic in there, probably. Um, I think that probably would have gone well for me. But uh, with what happened with the Gore attacks, it was just a bit like... Because this game, even if I'd done well in the center like that, this game could have turned on just how much those Gore-Tax can kill. So not only would I have gotten less points out of him in terms of like most of the other stuff here that is alive, I wouldn't have gotten. And I probably wouldn't have gotten the points for the Gore-Tax. Maybe eventually I kill one of them. But yeah, it's just... Uh, it just all turned really badly when those Gore-Tax died, which was... Like, I guess, I mean, the Minotaur Warlord, what, five attacks, hitting on twos, re-rolling, and battle... F hitting on threes, because he had Break the Spirit up. Rerolls and battle focus, and rerolls to wound. Strength seven. It's not totally unreasonable that he kills the Gortak. Um, I don't know, maybe a 25% chance? Is sort of my vague math, what my head's sort of telling me. Uh, the giant shouldn't have killed that gore over there. And it's just the sort of thing, like, if my giant had died or, like, broken or whatever, that gore would have been so hard to deal with over on the right. And, yeah, I, I got lucky with my Minotaur Warlord killing his gore But at what, like, even though that one was more likely than the uh, giant killing the gore which should be, like, fucking impossible, uh, it still shouldn't have happened. So it was like, it wasn't as if I had a good plan. My Minotaur Warlord was likely going to die and my Wizard was likely going to break. So it was the sort of thing where probably if those gore had done anything that close to what they should, um, probably his Wizard is living. He's probably still got a scoring unit. I've got these two monsters that I can't handle bearing down on me and I think Kev probably wins. Um, so they were annoying dice moments in the game, basically, that didn't feel very fair. And... On top of the fact that his Longhorns just fucking ran away, uh, wasn't great. I guess part of that is Kev's fault because he had such an easily killable BSB. Um, and then as soon as you lose your BSB with a Beast Hurt army that's not, you know, stacking on the Fearless and stuff, like you're in trouble. But yeah. Look, it was, it was a fun game and it was a fun opponent. Uh, it was just a little bit disappointing that the game didn't feel very fair because all the dice the entire game were on my side. Um, and even even just from a matchup perspective, it's kind of ironic that the best target for Jabberwocks and for the Beast Herd Hereditary is other Beast Herds army because they're like the most vulnerable to leadership. At least if you don't go like the Minotaur Heavy, Minotaur Wall or General type um, route. If you're using the infantry at all, it's basically you're really vulnerable to leadership shit. Whereas most other armies are either like, I guess, I guess other armies are sort of the same in that they're as vulnerable, but you don't see them. But you don't really see beasted armies that are vulnerable anyway. I don't know. This army was an army that was very vulnerable to the hereditary and to Jabberwocks. So um, having five terror causes as well was just. I don't know. It's not a really super fun way to play. And I don't like the Jabberwocks in general. I don't think their... Their output is pretty shit. Uh, they did well in this game because they rolled well against the um, Razor Tusks. But I don't like them for my playstyle. I don't think I'd use them again um, anytime soon. The Breath Weapon's really handy to deal with things that are hard to deal with. Like um, any of the like skirmishing damaging shooter units and stuff uh but yeah uh i basically eh, probably got a little bit of time but i'm gonna wrap up anyway um the voting for the tournament is still running so if you can hop on i think i've got the link in my previous video hop on and vote for me uh please we're fighting against the all of france that have voted for math cd so we're up against it but we can rally everybody around young seward that's what we want to do um I'll have, after this, I'll do, like, once the tournament's wrapped up, I'll do a list review. Because um, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I haven't tried that much before. So it'll be interesting to go through how I felt about it. Um, and we'll see, like, all the final results and shit. But until then, 
Uh, enjoy, guys.